I am really uncomfortable with the story of the crucifixion, with like analogies of the cross and metaphors and all that symbology. Because to me, it's hard to move past the idea of the cross as anything but a torturous death trap, a death thing, um, a symbol of sustained harm and insurmountable, painful loneliness. At least that was until I read what Jenny had given me. The commentary of the queer, uh, the queer Bible commentary uh, transposes the story of Christ, this, really every story in the Bible, but specifically this one was about the, the crucifixion, and it transposes that onto the story of the queer experience. It forces the reader to wonder whether the story of Christ can be seen through a lens of queerness, through a lens of drag even. She read a line to me as we sat and chatted. The secret is what makes people tremble. And people will tremble sensing the mystery of queer holiness. Ah, that struck me. The secret is what makes people tremble. And people will tremble sensing the mystery of queer holiness. To me, drag is a powerful form of uncovering my own secret, shouting it on the mountaintops. Drag allows me to process the mystery of myself, the mystery of God, the mystery of love, and the mystery of pain. When I walk the streets in six inch heels and wear four pounds of hair, double stacked wigs, the power which lies within my mystery is released into the world. When I paint my face meditating upon those who came before me, my, my spiritual ancestors, so to speak, I can reach into a deeper part of my soul. I can access every part of me I was told to hide away from the world, I was, that I was told to deny and that I was commanded to hate. I can externalize it all and I can celebrate it. Drag allows me to not only celebrate the divine surety that dwells within me, it allows me to show others how to celebrate it themselves. It allows me to show that it is not something to be boxed away. There is holy liberation occurring when folks feel they can release the mysterious secret shrouded by society. There is holiness in queerness. There is holiness in allyship. There is holiness in femininity and masculinity and fluidity. There are shrouded secrets of many forms in our lives. There is healing an acknowledgement of harm and pain. There is divinity stitching together emotional wounds when we are able to find spaces and methods of resources to see and acknowledge our worthiness of healing. You, you contain a marvelous mystery of divinity. You contain a worthiness of love, of health, of community, of healing that deserves to be seen. No matter what has been to, done to you, no matter what you have done, no matter what has been said over you, you deserve healing. In Mark 15, Christ is laughed at, told he is nothing but a lie, told that, he is, um, that his mystery is wrong and that he is unworthy of life. It is said that when Christ was arrested, he was clothed in a purple robe and given a crown of thorns that was pressed into his head. This was all a jest at his identity. One soldier laughs, hail the king of Jews. Christ was told his secret should make him tremble. 
And a few verses later, upon witnessing the power and liberation that came at the crucifixion, a soldier cried out in awe, surely this is the child of God. The death of Christ's secret for humanity gave way to a new life. It gave hope for those carrying their own inherited shrouds of secrecy. Christ's mystery was celebrated in glowing light and tongues of fire and a promise for all people, a promise that the divine love and grace shall dwell within them no matter what. Your identity is not a sin. Your identity is not punishable. Your identity deserves to be celebrated and loved and cared for. 